All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego. And today I am joined by Kevin Yurutia, who is actually in Dubai, normally in New York, but in Dubai today. How are you doing, Kevin? Good, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, John. Super excited to be here. Absolutely. And uh, and Kevin is from the company, he's the founder of Voy Media, a performance-based full-service agency uh, that does a lot of work around social media advertising as well as other things. And that's what we wanted to talk about today was social media advertising, particularly in a B2B context, because I, I, I have the feeling, Kevin, that a lot of B2B companies still struggle with how to leverage social media, how to, how, to le- how to advertise on social media, just how to make social media work for them. I think a lot of people still have a kind of a scattergun approach to it. Yeah, yeah, I, and I, I see that too. A lot of people, we get a lot of B2B businesses just ask us, hey, does it, does it work for Facebook? Do my customers on Facebook? And, and of course, uh, well, people are like, well, I can go on LinkedIn, right? And LinkedIn is great, but LinkedIn's super expensive. Cost per clicks are really expensive. But that's why I would say Facebook or Instagram is a great, great sort of opportunity. And the reason why I say that is because your customers, at least like these business leaders, are still on Facebook and Instagram. They're still like browsing their friends' platforms. They might not be in like that buyer mode. So mm-hmm. That's kind of why B2B is sort of interesting where it's more of like you have to massage them into like case studies, lead generation, uh, you know, webinars, that type of stuff. It still really it still works, especially some sort of big B2B clients that kind of where you need to build trust. And we sort of do it with other brands here too, where we're just sort of saying, hey, we know we're not gonna get the sale, like an e-commerce brand, like where it's like, hey, you see a widget and then you buy it right now. B2B, it's Mm -hmm. very long-term. And at least for us, the way we're thinking about it with Facebook ads and some tools out there, kind of like HubSpot, everybody knows HubSpot, but HubSpot's great to track the sort of like long-term sales cycle of a lead. Mm -hmm. And also like, so we use those with the clients and just sort of like, tell them like, hey, look, this is how we're going to work and this is how it's going to do it. Yeah. And I think the other the other thing, too, is I think their company struggle with a lot is when they go to social media, they're not sure what kind of personality to project. So sometimes they think, oh, I'm on Instagram. I'm going to have to be a little bit more out there and edgy and everything. And, And you end up with this kind of conflict between what they're trying to do in social media and the company itself. And it just looks contrived. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I think that's interesting because we do see that too. And it's, it's funny you're saying that because it's something here at our company too. Obviously we do ads for B2B and I have my own personal brand, which is Kevin, but also we have Boy Media, which is my company. And we always are in this battle of like, should we be very corporate on Boy Media brand or should we be very corporate on your personal brand? But I'm just <laughs> like, it's like, you know, it's kind of what you're saying. It's like, how should you be? But at least for me, my personal opinion in, this is based on just sort of like the people that I watch or who I think are great are, I, I follow personalities for brands. So I mm-hmm. like when a personality, is, a person is themselves and that's the company. For me, people like Gary Vee, right? I, I like him, he's right himself, but then he also has VaynerMedia, which is a big, big B2B agency that does everything. And again, it's all built on him and what makes him unique is his authenticity, but they still go to VaynerMedia, which is a big corporation. So you can see how it of course will translate because they believe in that sort of head figure. So I, I think, and I think at least for me personally, I follow a lot of companies now. The companies that I follow are because I follow the founder or the leader. I don't right. really know who the company, and I, at least for me, like I, my background is in tech, so I follow a venture capitalist. And it's something I'm seeing right now. Like when you follow a venture capitalist, you're following like the head capitalist and then everybody else is like an associate. But I know that let's say John Doerr, like if I had a startup, I would go to him. Like, I don't care where he's working. I just want to go like him to invest into my company because it's him. He's, he's really great. So I think person, personality and so personal branding is really big in this big to be space. And I think that's an advantage that uh, I think before people wanted to be hidden, be like, oh, I'm a B2B company. I, I shouldn't show personality. Yeah. But now I think it's like a great way to come out there and be like, hey, look, this is how I'm different. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And I think that um, I think that's a challenge for, for some companies because, I mean, they have to, as you said, I mean, especially leadership positions, if you like, yeah. you know, people are used to being a little bit kind of arm's length removed and this looks a little bit too up close and personal. So there's a choice that needs to be made. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's it's definitely something I think people like I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm young, but people much older feel that. But I think as like 
people our age, people younger than me, for example, like 18, 19, 20, they're used to this. So they're going to be starting B2B companies and they're going to be doing these personalities. They're going to be doing them. So for them to be natural, of course, it's, you're seeing the progression as younger B2B companies, you really know who the founders are. Like, for example, um, you probably know like Adam Levy, he's the founder of Box, the big software like Dropbox sure. competitor. And he's really vocal on Twitter. He's a very personality driven brand and he's funny. He makes jokes. He jokes about other businesses. And that's sort of like the type you're seeing with like all these other B2B companies that are coming out there as well. So it's again, a generational uh, thing. Yeah. No, I know it is. And I, 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 I understand that. And then by the time they, you know, that yeah. generation, then the generation below will be doing something else. Yeah. So they yeah. it'll constantly we'll evolve. Like, we'll, we'll have a uh, B2B businesses like dancing on TikTok and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so how do you, when you, when you, when it, maybe a more traditional B2B company approaches you and says, okay, you know, Kevin, I, I just don't know where to start. What do you say to them? I say the best way to start is, of course, like, let's just even make sense. Facebook is a great channel for you. Typically it is. Um, but really when, for example, we're working with a big company right now that's selling to like, you know, uh, carriers, people that sell like, mm -hmm. you know, shipping products, very limited supply of people on Facebook. But then again, we're thinking about it as in there's like your stakeholders, which are probably on Facebook, but there's probably maybe like a hundred of them because there's only like a few hundred companies that can use you but then you have uh, people below them that they're employees that then, and then below them, there's like their employees or like directors and VPs and sort of like staff, right? So really mm -hmm. the way we think about it for some sort of business like this is like when, I, I, for example, like, I mean, you're saying like you're John, like when you're looking for research, you're, you're someone that probably works for you, be like, hey, John, like this part's really cool. So they will come to you with all the research done. So you want to, you want to try to target those people below some sort of directors that, uh, you can then say, hey, show this to your boss. And the way I think about it, similar to like programming. So we, we have this thing in like programming, which is like kind of like developer driven approach into like coming to a company. So GitHub was very developer mm -hmm. friendly yeah. where it's like every developer was like, I look on GitHub to work on their side projects. And then because their side projects, they'll go to their boss. Hey, so-and-so, I think this tool is really cool. We should introduce it to the company. And that's kind of how we think about marketing because there's only so many like, CEOs that you can target where, but there's so many employees that you can influence to then say, Hey, show this to your boss and then do that. And then you can go to their business. Yeah. And, and uh, no, I think that's a, that's a, that's a fantastic point. And I think more than ever, I mean, I think business cultures have changed in many ways to be more open to flatter organizations and being open to ideas coming from various places. Cause nobody can keep up with everything. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing I was going to ask you, though, is how often then do you find when you engage with a company uh, and you say, OK, you know, let's look at what your ideal target customer, what the persona is, that maybe they haven't kept up, uh, uh, maybe they haven't kept up with the changing behaviors of their customers in the way that they think they have. Because I think sometimes people are looking at customers, how they used to behave five, 10, even 15 yeah. years ago, and they haven't really looked at uh, to see whether there's any changes. And even like you just mentioned, are there even generational changes happening in their customers? Yeah, so, so stuff like that, it's kind of tricky because when we have worked with some B2B companies, we try to see what they're thinking about and sort of what we can do. And sometimes we can't help because we they need to go out there and look for like a, a deep marketing research firm that says, hey, mm -hmm here your customers and here's how they're sort of interacting now. And then you come to us as an agency to help you sort of refine those targeting and the creatives. We help with, of course, like market research, but like sometimes we've, we have seen it before where we will see customers be like, hey, look, like this isn't just how they're buying anymore. And it, you probably know this, John. It could go one or two ways, either to say, okay, you're right or no, you're wrong. I, I'm not going to work with you. We're like, okay. So it's one of those things where, like anything, we need to see like, hey, what you're saying to us makes sense because we think that we can help. Or if it doesn't make sense, we think it's going to be like this. And are you down to change your personas or how are you thinking about your customers and how you want to talk to them or even target them on Facebook? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great point as well. And and the other part that you alluded to earlier is that, uh, you know, obviously LinkedIn is is a great place for, for B2B outreach 
but it's very expensive and it's very crowded right now and yeah. and, and a lot of other things and it's kind of getting spammy too oh, uh, it's so spammy. So, yeah <laughs> yeah it really it really really is i mean when they put that yeah. i think the worst thing they ever did was uh, put in that uh, automated email response thing it just drives me crazy yeah, yeah. um but uh so you know, given that, given that it's really expensive and stuff that, you know, obviously the, the other platforms like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and whatever to explore, where have you seen, where have you seen uh, people have maybe surprising success or success that surprised them when they went to these other platforms as opposed to just focusing on LinkedIn? I think the biggest platform that people find success now is YouTube. YouTube is great. Yeah. I think like for B2B businesses, it's like a gold mine. A lot of big companies are out there because it's cheap and like it's great because you can educate your users. Like a company that does this really well is Monday.com, B2B for like a, a task taking, a sign up type of company, right? They've grown on the backs of YouTube. Um, and I think that's a platform where, again, it's kind of those like initial Facebook ads when people first came out, like, oh my God, Facebook ads, gotta do videos. Like YouTube, oh man, I do a YouTube video, high quality production, but it's so cheap. And the reason why I really like YouTube ads as well is because obviously YouTube is owned by Google. You can still use a lot of your Google keywords and your keyword research you've already done and put that into uh, YouTube ads. So you can make these sort of like custom intent audiences of like keywords. For example, you know, we do a lot of Facebook ads. So Facebook people looking for Facebook ad agency, people looking for Facebook creatives, Facebook stuff. You can put this sort of like keyword list on YouTube and say, hey, YouTube, find me people who are searching this on Google and now show them my video creative. So think that's so powerful because it's like, it's such intent driven. And of course you can also do audiences and retargeting all that stuff that uh, Facebook has, uh, Google has sort of copied over to their video platform. So I think YouTube is a great sort of thing. And the reason, another reason why I really like it too is because uh, YouTube is still kind of hard to copy like with Facebook and everything else. Like you can always screenshot it and say, hey, let me go save this video creative with YouTube. It's still hard to like download a, a video because it's like private. Whereas, you know, Facebook has like a library. Google doesn't have that. So if you're good creative, it can last longer because you don't have all these other marketing companies just copying it and be like, all right, I'm going to go send this to a designer and make a new one. So uh, that's sort of some things that uh, you could take to your advantage before, you know, YouTube maybe comes out with like a YouTube library of sorts of yeah. all the best top that I had. So. And the, and the other thing about YouTube is I think people overlook sometimes that it is one of the highest used search engines. So, I mean, it is a search engine. Yeah. People go search they search YouTube yeah. for things and, and, and business, especially, uh, you know, I think oh, there's yeah. more business, there's more business people leveraging YouTube than people think. Yeah. Like, for example, another way to think about this too, is the guys, the, like the influencers in the business space, anything like finance, business, obviously, you know, anything related to that space, those guys are the ones earning more money because there's so much money getting poured into them. So you realize that a lot of people do want to learn, especially, especially on a learning platform. People that are VPs, execs at these B2B companies, they're learners. They're constant learners. They're always looking for things like how to do this in Excel, how to do this in this, how do you figure out like how, my growth rate, all this type of stuff mm -hmm. that potentially maybe you can sort of see how does that fit into your product, your service, and try to be in front of that. So again, I, that's why you're, what you're saying is right. YouTube is the biggest, second biggest search engine besides Google and <laughs> Google owns both ones. So you have <laughs> the best platforms, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, Kevin, is there anything else coming up on the horizon that people need to be aware of? Because there's always new things coming out. Where, where's, the, where's the next big thing or the next supposed big thing coming? I don't know. I think some of the biggest things for me, I'm still a big believer in Twitter, uh, even though Twitter advertising platform is really bad and I have no clue what they're doing there. I'm <laughs> seeing some great changes at Twitter with the product development, a bunch of new features they've released like this summer. So for me, that gives me hope. And the reason why I say Twitter is because Twitter, for me, it's still a big company, but it still feels like, like you need to be like, get Twitter. And a lot of people that use Twitter are like very tech savvy. A lot of like CEOs use it. A lot of VPs use it because they want to connect with peers just like them. So I feel like Twitter has this sort of like really well-educated audience that, uh, you know, is on tap because I don't know, Twitter just hasn't figured out the ad platform. But for me, I'm just like, <laughs> How, like, haven't you just poached an exec from Facebook or Google and be like, hey, come build our platform because that's what Facebook did, right? So for me, I think yeah. Twitter is a platform that I, I, I say that too because I'm a, I have a Twitter user for the past like seven, eight years. So I, I wish they got better because I'm like, this is such a great company. And I, and I think for me as a VP or even someone in B2B, 
it's a great platform to connect with other people that you know potentially could help you out with your, and sort of connect and stuff. But for me, I use it all the time and I connect with people all the time on Twitter. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice because I do think people are still very kind of neophyte when it comes to using Twitter or they, they use it on a very like superficial level. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, uh, Kevin, this has been fantastic. All of Kevin's information uh, and Boy Media's information will be below this video. But before we go, go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Yeah. So like I said, my name is Kevin and I run Boy Media. We help B2B companies or B2C companies sort of scale on Facebook and Instagram or any sort of main social platform out there uh, with creative. So that's it. And you can always find us at voymedia.com. All right. Well, listen, uh, thanks very much, uh, Kevin, for joining us all the way from Dubai today. Uh, my name is John Golden. I uh, will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.